Hi, this is Talia. I'm getting ready to work on a new portrait. Yay! Uh, my beautiful model today is Katie, and I photographed her in the Portland Rose Garden. I really want to be able to dig into this portrait and make it all about her, um, about her face, her expression, the wonder that she experienced um, being able to be at the Rose Garden for the first time. Katie's face isn't being lit by the overhead sun. You can see a little bit of direct lighting up here on her hair and her shoulder, but most of her face is being lit indirectly by the light that's reflecting off the roses, off the ground, off the sky. There's diffused colorful light bouncing all over the place. And um, it's perfect light to describe her face features and it's perfect light especially for a young woman um, but it also makes me gauging my values and flushing out a clear no tan a little bit more tricky so uh, when I work from a photo reference I like to use Photoshop to help me figure out the direction that I want to go to and uh, just figure out the no tan uh, gauge my values see where the portrait is going to take me um, I'm in Photoshop right now um, and if you follow my mouse, you can see that I'm set to Essentials. Let me click on Photoshop. See right there, it's Essentials. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is crop this photo to a 16 by 20 ratio. So I'm going to go to my cropping tool. And you can see that it's already set up for 16 by 20, but if it's not, um, like for you at home, you can go ahead and type that in. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this a bit. Um, I'd like to move her over a little bit to the side, um, but still leave plenty of room up and around her. I tend to steer away from centered paintings, uh, portraits. So I'm going to double click and here it is cropped. Um, next I'm going to go to my layers window, it's right here if you follow my mouse, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this letter, layer a couple times. So I click on the layer and I drag it down to this, looks like a page, and then I'm going to do that again. So now we have three duplicate layers of the same image. I'm going to go ahead and hide the bottom one and then select on the top one, which is already selected, under the blending options, I'm going to go multiply. Um, this is a really cool blending mode. Um, I often use it with photos that are overexposed or washed out. Basically, it adds all the color information on top of the layer to the layer beneath it. So it's kind of like putting a transparency over a photo. You can see now that there's a much clearer differentiation between light and dark. Um, the, and and I, I can also see my colors a little bit better. Um, you can see the eye sockets. You can see it's very definitive where the light is hitting her directly. So I'm going to merge these two layers by going under this little arrow right here on the right hand side and it says merge visible and you can see it doesn't touch the layer underneath it. And next I'm going to duplicate this layer in order to make a no tan. So I go under image, adjustments, here it is. And I want to go to threshold. And you can see instant no tan. Except the problem is, is I don't, you can't really see what it is. You can't see that, I guess maybe if you looked closely, you could figure out it's a person, but her entire face is in shadow. So I'm going to move this slider out a bit. And it's basically up to me how much I'm going to move it in. I really like this. Um, I've got, you've got a little bit of the Rembrandt triangle. Um, it's very 
simple. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I am going to simplify it a little bit. I usually don't do photos or don't paint from photos where they have big toothy grins. And I don't want her teeth to interfere with the actual um, painting. So I'm going to click on my paint tool. It's already set to black. Go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to simplify my no tan a bit. So all the dark stay in the dark and all the light stay in the light. And I don't want them to um, interfere with each other too much. I'm going to zoom out a bit. And I may end up uh, eventually simplifying this light a little bit. One of the dangers that you can run into is having your light and your dark uh, be at equal levels. You want your lights and your darks to be at um, uneven levels, so either more light or more dark. And this is ending up to be more about the light. Um, and I think I'm actually pretty happy with it. Her face is fairly recognizable um, from far away. and. Um, you always want the face to be recognizable from far away. I like for my paintings to have interest both up close and from far away. Um, so I'm actually pretty excited about this Notan. I'm going to go ahead and print it out. Um, you can see that all my layers are preserved so you can save it in Photoshop and um, I have a lot of information to go off of when I do my final painting. Um, if you find this video helpful, you want to know more, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel or uh, becoming a patron on Patreon. Um, you can also find me on several different social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, you name it, I'm there. Uh, you can also find links um, to all these that I've spoken about below. Keep an eye out for an upcoming portrait workshop um, where we will be painting Katie together. All right, thank you.